Dragon's Dogma 2, more like I need to poo. Because I literally can't stop playing the game long enough to get up and go take a sh- The long-awaited sequel is here, and barring a few performance issues, I could not be having more fun. Currently, our most viewed video on this channel is the fist-only run I did for the prior game. People loved it. But don't take it from me, here are a few testimonials. Bumble24 says, Fantastic vid. I loved this game when it came out. Matthew states, the sheer dedication and commitment brings a tear to my eye. Ambient Gaming says, This would be really great if you had any real personality. That one sure did hurt, but not enough to stop me from dusting off my controller and going for round two. Now the sequel doesn't have a bloody knuckle ring in it, yet, and without it, we're doing pretty pathetic damage for most of the game, resulting in what can only be described as the most frustrating video I've made to date. So strap in, rip out some hair, and suffer with me as we attempt to beat Dragon's Dogma 2 using only our fists. As always, we start our adventure by creating our character. I haven't played as a Beastron yet, so why not? A piece of me just wishes they had a passive increase to unarmed, like in Skyrim. Here's the finished product. I was going for furry with anchor arms. This mage dude is being pretty rude, considering I can turn his head around like a cap on toothpaste. You come along, you feckless dullards. Don't be mean. Holy shit, I'm a monster. No one's gonna stand a chance. After just a few screenshots, we're jumping on a griffin and headed to safety. Oh my god. If you're truly the Arisen, then our paths will surely cross again. And we never saw him again. Justin, with two wins, is a stupid name. Now I hate you. Let's take our anger out on some goblins. The attacks work like normal weapons, having both a light and heavy attack. And when you break someone's guard, you can do this really cool uppercut for critical damage. While we're in combat, let's go over the general rules of this run. We are not allowed to equip any weapons under any circumstances. We are also doing this solo, which means our goth mommy here is just eye candy. She'll have to hang out with Rook in the belly of the brine. I didn't originally plan on allowing myself to throw things like bodies or rocks, but considering almost every fight is a 1v4, and we do virtually no knockdown damage at all, I decided I wasn't a masochist and would allow myself to throw things as well. Now, if you think that's unfair, watch this first fight with my very first harpy. Damn it. This feels like I'm punching in my dreams. I can't even fucking hit them, bro. It's so frustrating. I don't even know if I can fight these things, dude. Like, that's what I'm thinking. Maybe Thief would... Oh, my God. She's literally embarrassing me. Dude, this is unbelievably annoying. Hello, motherfucker. And just like that, I'm already almost dead again. One, two, three, I'm four. dead, dude. I'm so fucking dead. Dude, your mother is a very outstanding woman. This is ridiculous. I never even actually killed the thing. I ended up just running away after being stunted on for six straight minutes. Now, obviously, I can't kill the dragon with the pathetic damage that we're doing now. So how do we increase it? This damage scales with your strength, just like in the first game. When we level, our stats increase, and this increase is determined by our vocation. A fighter and warrior will gain much more strength than a mage or sorcerer. There are also a few other pieces of gear in the game that raise our stats as well. So with a combination of both leveling and gear, we're hoping to stack as much as possible to make this run doable. As we arrive in Melv, one of our most important NPCs is waiting on us. This merchant sells the Ring of Aggression, which increases our strength by a flat 30. Now at the time, I didn't think to scrounge up enough money to buy a second one since they do indeed stack, but 
we'll come back later. Raging as hard as I did earlier gives me a small stroke. Thankfully, this beautiful woman was there to save me. Shrugging off her hospitality, we buy our first augment, Metal, which reduces the physical damage we take. And trust me, we'll be taking a lot of physical damage. We also buy a helmet to protect that dome and head out for our first boss encounter. On our way, we stop to loot a cape, a chest with a savagery extract, and then grill some meat for a massive strength boost. With these things combined, the Cyclops in this area isn't difficult at all, but he has a tendency to ragdoll us. Oh, I think I'm dead. <laughs> oh, that was so funny. Dead? No, okay, thank God. When you get back up, just throw a few rocks at his knees and go to town on that big fat juicer of an eyeball. Nice. Damn! There we go. Knocked his weapon out of his hand. Nice. There we go. Alright, come over here. Bop! And finally... Oh, god damn it. And then he's dead. GG's. Broke your knees. Before we know it, we are finally in Vernworth. Our first objective above anything else is to obtain the warrior vocation as fast as possible. So once we grab the quest from the guild, we upgrade our chest piece and head straight back into the wilderness. I begin to realize our biggest source of frustration is being ganged up on. With multiple enemies hitting me consecutively, we're pretty much just playing Chumbawamba Simulator. Okay, yep, I fucked it up. Ow. Guess my defense is a lot higher. Just get up. There we go. Wanna break from the ads? Dude. Can I not get up? Bro. If a dog gets you, are you just. D what the fuck was that? Yo! And a another one just grabs me! Once in the cave, it doesn't take long to grab the greatsword and book it back to Vernworth. On our way, we stop to watch the Cyclops go for a swim. Oh. That works too. With the warrior vocation finally obtained, we can breathe a little. Vocations get passive stat increases that aren't mentioned for some reason, and one of the warriors is knockdown resistance, meaning it'll take more than one hit from a standard enemy to stagger us. After grabbing some new leggings, it's time to meet up with Brant and start our main missions. That's what she said. And you know what? I, what was that? Okay, James. I will be unable to land all in the way of all right, let's get cracking. A lot of these missions don't even require you to leave the city, meaning easy XP without getting our shit rocked. First is a panty raid on Disa, then we jailbreak the old fart and stuff him in a cave. Now if you didn't know, you can get an infinite jail key by taking the one Captain Brant gives you and creating a copy at Home Depot. On our way home from the rest town, the big slime ambushes us, and since no one does magic damage, it literally wipes everyone out. I'm sorry, bro. I can't help you, man. I can't kill that thing. Oh my god, this is so... Oh, is he dead? Once back in town, we grab some XP and knock out both the Masquerade and Alard mission since they're right next to each other. These quests go by much quicker when you know what to do and group them in close proximity. Speaking of which, now we can do the Monster Calling and Thief Village. We're already feeling much stronger now that we've got a decent boost to strength and we don't fall down quite as easy. After clearing the first area, we're even feeling confident enough to solo an ogre. What the fuck is this? I mean, am I just dead? <laughs> I mean, there's no way I survived that. Oh, okay. Thank God it only did a fraction of damage. When he does his uppercut attack, it's the perfect opportunity to knock him down. Once he's calmed down a bit, you can knee his skull into bone soup. Come on. And he's dead. Oh, and I am tired. 
you never really stood a chance. Damn, plus nine strength. Next up were the Saurians of Harv Village. I really struggled fighting these monsters at first. Obviously, cutting off the tail wasn't an option, but I realized once one of them were staggered, I could pick it up and throw him at his buddies. While they're on the ground, we can walk over and do a critical for massive damage. Only one spot left for the monster calling, and it's just a few goblins. However, next door is the secret village, so let's knock that out real quick. The minotaur guarding the way was a weird enemy to figure out at first, but if you let him run into a wall when he charges, he goes straight down for a critical. Finally, dude. Oh, fuck. Level 16. Lots of strength and defense. I love it. After a cute little obstacle course, the secret village is complete. Turning in the missions gives us a good chunk of XP, some extra gold, and finally, after being granted a port crystal from Brant, we've progressed enough to head for Back Batal. Before leaving, we sell every single material we've had up until this point. Turns out, when you just sell everything instead of hoarding it, it's quite lucrative. Now, it's time to significantly upgrade our armor to the second best warrior set in the entire game. We start by running all the way to Back Batal and setting down a port crystal in the middle of town. Now, most people don't head for the volcanic island until the story brings them there near the end. But technically, from the very start of the game, if you know what you're doing, you can easily run straight there. The way is plagued with a ridiculous amount of enemies that will absolutely harass you. Eventually, you'll happen upon a cave filled with lots of little goblins. Just keep running until you find the exit, and congrats, you're at the island. A little bit further, and we're finally at the encampment where you'll find a merchant that regardless of level or story progression sells the second best armor in the game. We're immediately able to buy both the chest piece and the leggings. Oh These arms look a tad ridiculous, but I guess it's pretty on brand. After scrounging loot on the island for almost an hour, we now have enough to buy the helmet as well. Let's test our damage resistance. Look at that. Obviously much better. The last remaining piece of gear needed is a second ring of aggression. Unfortunately, I corrupted the recording of me going and getting a second copy of the ring. So I'll just show my stats afterwards and an ogre fight for comparison. There you go. That's good damage, man. I know it's just an ogre, but this is good. There we go. <laughs> Stomped his brains in, bitch. Sit down. If you're still enjoying the video, it would really, really mean a lot to us if you would consider subscribing. We've got more Dragon's Dogma 2 content on the way, so why not stick around and see what shenanigans we get up to? It's always been a dream of ours to one day hit 100k subs on this channel, so any support is sincerely appreciated. Thanks so much, now back to the video. Now that all our gear is obtained, we need only to level up a lot and max out our vocation for the last remaining augments. Farming levels versus vocations are optimized differently. Killing bosses awards a large chunk of experience and only a paltry sum of discipline, making it excellent for grinding levels, but not ideal for increasing our vocation. If we can get only 147 discipline from killing this cyclops after 15 minutes, compared to killing 10 hobgoblins for 580 discipline, in the same amount of time, it makes more sense to just farm the smaller enemies instead of bosses. As insufferable as Bakbatal is, its enemy density is perfect for what we're needing. I can only farm for so long since it's just so stressful playing solo. Let's take a break and go do some missions. There it is. Oh, finally. Okay, well, we leveled up again. 197, see, 197 is not worth, whoa, 15 strength? That's a huge upgrade. After meeting up with Joaquin Phoenix and then the Dragon Forged, we randomly get a big chunk of XP. Where the hell did that come from? Oh my God, I think that Griffin just committed Sudoku. Now I know a Chimera lives in this cave, so let's see if we can kill it. Biting this thing is the equivalent of taking on three separate bosses at once. I did manage to kill it, 
but only after shaving a few years off my life. I'm used to doing the snake first, but I think this goat is just casting magic so much that I really don't have a choice. Everyone just chilling. Okay, that's something. That's not nothing. There we go. He doesn't really know how to handle me clinging to his head. <sighs> and oh my god, bro. Fucking take this L. Oh, damn. Tons of strength. We love that. Rotten scrag of beast. Oh, they used a rotten steak in the picture. That's so fucking nasty. After speaking with the trickster lady, it's time to explore the sea castle. The dude who made Vermund turns into a knife for some reason, and now Joaquin wants us to find 15 Worms Life crystals. I already have a few, but I'm in no position currently to be fighting a dragon. So, back to the grind. There we go! It worked! <laughs> it backed up into it, dummy! There we go. Punched him right in the eye. Nice! Okay. Second to last vocation rank up. We love that. Please. And. Oh. Oh. What a beautiful finish. So I was randomly ambushed by like a hundred bandits. But if we line him up into this corridor and just eat a body, it uh, seems to be pretty effective. Can I please just go to sleep? Come on. You know, I don't have time for this. I'm just going back to town. I'm starving. How much longer is this food? I don't know. I should be here in a few minutes. Come here. You got something on your face. What happened? Ugh, mama can't wait much longer. Release me. Oh. Fuck. There we go. Nice. Finally, after roughly four hours, we've maxed out our vocation. Here are the augments we're using. To be frank, the only ones we really need were dominance, which increases our knockdown power, and intrepidity, which reduces cumulation of the loss gauge. Now there are two other augments we could get to increase our strength. Rank 6 of the Mystic Spear Hand gives us 5% during the day, and rank 9 of the Thief gives us a flat increase of 30. No problem, so I switch to Mystic Spear Hand to start grinding, and... Oh, we're back to being staggered in one fucking hit again. <gasps> our strength is so low, dude. Dude, and our health is low. No, there's no way. There's no way. It's not. No, we're not doing this. Sorry. We're not. Our knockdown resistance, gone. Physical damage resistance, gone. And why are my punches so weak? At this point, I am feeling super burnt out on this playthrough. So let's just try and kill a dragon and wrap this up. In hindsight, there is a dragon at the ancient battlegrounds in Vermund that you can kill with a giant ballista for easy crystals. But I didn't know that at the time. Even after saving an insane amount of curatives, I still wasn't able to kill a lesser drake. With no pawns, he has no other targets. So by the time I'm able to get to his heart, he's already thrown me off or zapped me with his spells. Not to mention our damage just isn't enough to kill it within a reasonable time frame. I mean, this fight alone took probably 20 25 minutes. At this point in the playthrough, we have roughly 300 strength. We tried a few other options for increasing our strength, but at the time of recording, the Ring of Brawn is bugged, and the other augments aren't worth the time it takes to get them. 
Thankfully, the drakes drop a few crystals throughout the duration of the fight, and after the dragon next to Harv flew off, I had just enough. <gasps> there it is. Oh my god, yes. Oh, thank God. Finally, we're able to obtain the Empowered God's Bane and work our way to the final boss. At this point in the playthrough, I'm really starting to wonder whether we'd be able to finish this run or not. If we couldn't kill a lesser drake, how were we going to kill the final boss, the ultimate dragon? I was just so done with playing this way. Because believe it or not, being thrown around like a ragdoll and beaten into the ground while doing pitiful damage is not a good way to experience this game. I guess we'll just have to take my chances and hope for the best. Funny enough, Renal is pretty strong, and he may have even beaten me, but gravity is stronger. <laughs> you don't actually have to fight these dorks, just run up to Phasus. I guess if you don't have affinity with any other character, the game just chooses Brant, which is pretty hilarious. After a brief monologue, it's time to see if we can continue the cycle and kill the dragon with only my fists. There we go. That's something. That's damage. So deal damage to open the heart, I guess. No, don't do it. Ow. We can just get him to do his dragon fire. That'd be enough for me. Why? There we go. Okay, this is my chance. I don't know if these stack, but we're gonna figure it out real quick. They do not stack. It is apparent to me about that. We got this, man. Okay, so I think we figured out a way to beat him. If we just stand in front of his head, he'll do a big breath attack. Then we can jump on, kick the shit out of him, and eventually he goes down. And then that's where we, we do our, our DPS phase. I'm feeling pretty good about this. Oh, that's not good. It's fucking death, okay. Get up, get up, get up, go, 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 move, 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 come on. This is our damage phase, go, go, go. No, I think we fucked it. Come on. Yes, okay. Come on. Fall. Yes. Come on, let's beat the fucking game! <laughs> yes! God, finally! Holy shit. Woo! That feels so good. And thus ends the tale of our fist only run. Can you beat Dragon's Dogma 2 with only your fists? Absolutely. Should you? No. This playstyle really is not fun, and the early game is literal torture. Maybe we'll see a bloody knuckle ring when they drop the DLC, maybe, but until then, I'll just be happy this is finally finished. Huge shout out to the members. Members get access to perks like additional uploads and they get all of our videos early and ad free. If you're interested in becoming a member, check the description for more details. See you all next time. Later.